You know, it's like everyone and their grandmothers, in fact, remember their damn childhood so, so well. They remember all the games they played, they remember who they played them with, and they remember them all being awesome. Well, my memory sucks. I like my childhood, I think, but I just don't remember it very well. But, that's not to say that I'm not without my beginnings. Now, you'll probably have noticed that I do a lot of Xbox Live Arcade related games here, and there's a game that got that all started. In this game, it's a game called Small Arms. Yes, it is in fact a pun, like some other games I've done videos about, and anyone with just the tiniest grasp of my personality knows that I like puns. Though it existed on the original Xbox, the Xbox Live Arcade service was a growing, infantile thing when the Xbox 360 came around. It was like a home arcade where every game had a $10 cover charge and no quarters. While it would eventually become my favorite platform for gaming, there was only one reason I was really interested in Xbox Live Arcade at the time. Small Arms. This game represented something unique, exclusive, and interesting, not like anything else on the platform. Though this was also true of Alien Hominid, but it was really fucking hard, so I didn't buy it. And I still haven't. Foreshadowing? Small Arms is a party brawler, a genre dominated by the Super Smash Bros. franchise. I call it a party brawler instead of a fighting game or like a multiplayer 2D arena based beat em up, because there's more to the game than just the fighting. And not that last one, because despite its very accurate description, it's a tad ridiculously long, I would say. Party ballers are competitive yet without much learning curve and focus on quick and simple gameplay with nifty characters. Look, it's a cat, cyborg, wearing armor, with a machine gun. That's pretty neat, right? <laughs> I mean, there's also like a flamethrower wielding chicken man and a really pissed off looking tree with a strong sense of irony in his weapon choice. Granted, compared to everyone else, his is one of the few weapons that actually makes some kind of sense. For example, this pig assassin has a sniper rifle. This Star Fox Adventures looking T-Rex man, he has a nice cannon. So some of it kind of makes sense and some of it kind of doesn't. Some of it's really really cool and some of it kind of isn't. It's all rather haphazard and a little bit silly, honestly. But that wasn't really something that was going to make me stop being interested in the game. In fact, I just happen to like weird characters and strange ideas and even if they don't really have a proper reason for existing. What can I say? I'm into that kind of stuff. The strange cast of characters wasn't all that grabbed me though. I happen to be a huge fan of party brawlers and multiplayer games in general. Small Arms, if you haven't paused the Google why it's a pun yet, is a reference to the guns carried by light infantry in the military. So naturally, Small Arms is about furry creatures with unproportionately sized weapons. Hmm, makes perfect sense. Specifically, a cast of 14 characters shoot each other to ribbons in 2.5D environments to accumulate the most kills or survive the longest, depending on the game type. If that sounds like Super Smash Brothers, that's because they're both party brawlers, like I said. But this one has guns, and batteries, and jumping up a waterfall. That makes sense, right? <laughs> Games like this are really hard to gauge from afar. In Small Arms, most of the levels aren't very big, so with four characters on screen, it gets pretty freaking insane, especially when the more graphically ridiculous weapons are in play. Each weapon has a primary and an alternate fire, giving a strong sense of diversity to the weaponry you can wield. Not every weapon is created equally, however, which can result in some pretty one-sided fights. <laughs> Fortunately, weapons spawn randomly as the game proceeds, and the more powerful weapons eat up more battery, so it's not too game-breaky. However, while this suits the gameplay soundly, it affects the small arms experience in a negative way. Here's why. The onus of party brawlers to provide a wide variety of players with a similarly enjoyable experience is a tough one to follow through on. Often this means things like characters, modes, levels, weapons, all of these things, things that people can just randomly find and inexplicably enjoy. So for instance, that could mean a tree moving a flamethrower. For someone who's just really interested in that or finds it funny or fun or interesting, that's what the game is going to be about. It's going to be about that tree plus flamethrower. That's the whole game, even if it doesn't work, even if they don't win. And that's a pretty tough thing to accomplish. Believe it or not, this is where the fairly recent, widely popular genre of the MOBA, or Multiplayer Online Battle Arena, and Party Brawlers share commonality. While the two play quite differently, they both employ characters which are complete, specific creations whose presentation matches their implementation. 
In Super Smash Bros., you have a concept of how a character is in their respective games, or based on how they look if you don't know what game they're from, and their behaviors are often in line with your assumptions. For instance, Bowser is fat and slow. He breathes fire and he's got sharp claw things he likes to rend people with. <laughs> On the other end, popular MOBA, League of Legends, as well as most other MOBAs like Dota, etc., feature original characters, but they are designed with skills that fit their concepts as well. For instance, Jarvan IV is the leader of the Demacian Nation, and so he runs around yelling DEMACIA all the time, and mechanically he can initiate fights and, in his own special way, is quite uh, helpful. In both cases, what you see is more or less what you get. Now yes, I know, Super Smash Bros. and League of Legends are both ridiculously popular franchises, and most people would probably say, put gameplay first. And yeah, they are very gameplay oriented, but that's only a fraction of your attachment to the game. The way the characters in those games behave, react, the way they talk, the things that they can do, and the way they look, those are all incredibly important parts of you being interested in that game at all. It's kind of like how your friends, their quirks, their flaws, their behaviors, their history with you, keeps you coming back to your friends. Yeah, I know that may seem like a little bit of a deep analogy for a game about just beating stuff up, but there are real, real, real reasons why people get hooked on those kinds of games, and they're bigger than just the gameplay. This idea is the reason Small Arms never garnered a proper following, which makes me sad because I genuinely have fun with Small Arms. However, all those weird characters I mentioned are ultimately just their designs and not much else. Since any character can wield any weapon once the weapon spawns, there's not much to form an attachment to. It creates a dissonance between what your character looks like and how you expect it to function, versus what weapon they're using at the given time and what sort of character might actually use that kind of weapon. On top of that, the gameplay, while solid, doesn't have enough content to sustain prolonged play. There aren't enough quality maps, like this map. This is just a terrible piece of shit. Even the AI can't navigate it properly. The idea? Good, being in a tornado while jumping on platforms beating shit up? Yeah, that's a great idea, but it just doesn't work. And that's the bottom line. To make matters worse, since the weapons are tied to characters, there really aren't enough of either. Backhead Guy and Muffled Voice Armor Man are my favorites. I mean, I almost always pick them. But the moment I switch their weapons, the character I chose goes from being a complete idea to being merely an avatar with some stats and whatever weapon I'm using at the time. The actual gunplay just isn't enough to sustain the game's character gameplay dissonance. Though admittedly, Flamethrower Tree is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs>Perhaps it's a little bit of a reach to say that Small Arms is a classic. Although a lot of XBLA early adopters did play it, nobody really talks about it anymore. And since my XBLA inception, the relevance of Small Arms has shrunk, and holding it up to the maybe recent memories of XBLA games doesn't really do it any favors. However, on the miniature limb, of XBLA that is party games, it'll always stand out as being something that I enjoyed and that I would recommend to most people. And with that, I'm now out of ways to coherently jam small arms puns into this video, so fucking done, yo. Thanks for watching. Oh, it's a it's an end of the video message. That's crazy. Don't forget about all the liking and subscribing and annotations and shit, but but more importantly. Uh, thanks a lot, people who subscribed and stuff like that after Sonic Generations vid showing up. Because some of you guys came for Brutal Moose and you were like, oh, Brutal Moose is in this video, maybe it doesn't suck. And I appreciate that you guys stayed around. And for everybody else, I appreciate you guys too. Uh, it's been a little bit of a, some life stuff happened. I went to E3 and stuff like that, and I came back with a lot of thoughts. But I'm back. It's all good. Got tons of ideas, ready to go. New things. There's a new show debuting soon. Uh, you can thank Balrog for that idea. Thanks, Balrog, you sexy piece of shit. Alright, everybody, thanks for watching. Enjoy the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And enjoy the rest of your life and your day and your sandwich. And if you haven't had a sandwich recently, maybe you should go down and get a sandwich. Head of the sandwich place. <laughs>